Hello. We have a big group of panelists here with us, but we'll give a minute for others to join us at the top of the hour. We're very excited to really highlight our Center for Mental Health team today. So I hope you guys are excited as well. All right, usually we always start our webinars sharing our non-discrimination statement, both on the next slide and in the chat. You'll learn more about our efforts to better integrate diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility, including closed captioning of today's meeting. I will go through a couple other housekeeping items. Um, please use the, the question and answer function, not the chat box to submit questions. We're gonna have a lively panel discussion after our first two overviews, so welcome questions. We don't get them answered during this hour. We will follow up and provide Q and A's um, with the recording. So please don't be shy if time is tight, but still give us your question. As noted, your recording and any remaining Q and A's will be shared on our webinar series page. We'll also circulate widely through other NIFA and Southern University channels. I do wanna highlight that our um, future webinars for March, we're gonna be celebrating National Nutrition Month. We're gonna have our Director of Nutrition Security and Health Equity, Dr. Kari Cartwright, and our own um, NIFA Associate Director for Programs, Dr. Tu, kick off a conversation about all of NIFA's ways it's contributing towards making my plate a household name. We hope to have some of our grantees and key stakeholders highlighting some of their relevant work. Highlighted here is just the background for this series. This is part of the department-wide effort to advance food and nutrition security. It's the core priority of the secretary. NIFA has been at the forefront of working to elevate this priority area since it started over two years ago. We leverage more than 20 programs in this space and including our work that Dr. Um, Salusa will share today with advancing Dr. Um, Jacobs Young core priority on um, Ascend for Better Health. On the next slide, you'll see that the NIFA team really is made up of more than 80 people. I have the privilege to help lead this team. And really so many of the team is on the behind the scenes efforts of making this webinar happen today and really our overall work um, to help advance this core priority on tackling food and nutrition insecurity. Um, do really wanna highlight this is a cross agency effort um, within NIFA showcasing our variety of institutes and offices. And as you'll hear more today, NIFA works not just within our institutes um, and across our institutes, but really across our department with so many of our partners like Southern University highlighted today. And I do really want to give a special shout out for Southern University because they have been highlighted on our webinar series before. And so it's a joy to have them here today. Um, on our next slide, I will just kind of give an overview of today's run of show. We're going to have Dr. Grusak from the University uh, from the United, sorry, not try not talking about abbreviations, from the US, the Department of Agriculture Research, Education, and Economics Mission Area. He serves as the senior advisor for, for precision nutrition, and he will give the overview of a Center for Better Health. And then he'll pass off to his Southern University colleague. Um, starting for us today will be Dr. York. And then after the two of them present, we'll have our full Ascend team, both from the USDA side. And then next slide from our Southern University colleague, um, they will join. I, I will have at the top of that discussion, each of them introduce themselves in their role. And then you'll also find in the chat, all of their bio links. Um, all of these um, members today are very approachable. So feel free to ask questions during um, the event on the Zoom QA, or feel free to reach out to them directly. At this time, I do want to pass off to Dr. Grusak, who's been helping lead the Ascend for Better Health Coordination at USDA. Thanks, Sheila. Um, well, thanks everyone for joining today. Uh, I'm going to start off by giving you a little overview of, of the Ascend um, initiative. Um, Ascend stands for Agricultural Science Center of Excellence for Nutrition and Diet. And this was really developed as a virtual center, um, really kind of a, an umbrella center to accelerate research on diet-related chronic diseases, including cancer, and I'll, I'll get into that a bit more in a second, with an aim to really translate research into um, solutions that would improve public health, especially among underserved populations. Um, the next slide, please. Just a little background on, on where Ascend came from. Um, it really stems from a number of, of 
issues and, and challenges and opportunities that are out there in the food and nutrition space. Um, the White House Conference on Hunger, Nutrition, and Health was uh, really one of the um, guiding forces behind this, but even more so the cancer moonshot from um, the administration. Um, also the fact that uh, there's really an increase in diet-related chronic diseases out there, in particular uh, amongst underserved populations. Um, and also we have the dietary guidelines for Americans that are developed through USDA guidance and um, those guidelines also sort of contribute to this whole idea behind what we're doing with the sand. Uh, next slide. Uh, the cancer moonshot is really um, an effort to bring together um, all of government, um, healthcare providers, researchers, patients, private and public sectors to really help prevent um, cancers. Um, the goal of the cancer moonshot is to prevent more than 4 million cancer deaths by 2047 and really to improve the experience of people who are touched by cancer as well. Uh, next slide. Um, there's five priority actions as part of the cancer moonshot, and one of them, you can read them here, but one of them relevant to ASCEND is the priority of preventing more cancers before they start. And really where ASCEND uh, grew out of this cancer moonshot was that we know that 30% of all cancers are diet related and, and are preventable through healthy eating and lifestyle changes. And so better nutrition, better diet um, can help to prevent those cancers. In addition, we know that amongst all cancers, those who are challenged with cancer, there's a very high incidence of, of malnutrition. And so we also know that better diet, better nutrition, uh, more nutritious, healthy foods for those dealing with cancer treatments and dealing with cancers can lead to better outcomes. And so we're, we're really looking at all these in, in combination. Uh, next slide. As I mentioned, uh, diet-related chronic diseases are on the rise, uh, not only um, um, you know, with cancers, those diet-related cancers, but things like kidney disease. Uh, we know obesity is, is a big issue, um, especially in the US, diabetes, hypertension, liver disease. And in particular, um, we know that the rates of these um, issues are even higher among uh, minority populations, underserved populations, um, because of just a number of economic factors, healthcare factors, and so forth, as well as, as the diets uh, that are, are available uh, to many of these populations. Next slide. So a sand, as I said, was um, really grew out of some of these issues that are out there um, as really a, an umbrella center focused on precision nutrition. And I'll tell you a bit more about that in a second, uh, but precision nutrition for underserved populations who were often at higher risk for these food and nutrition insecurity and diet related chronic diseases. And so the Kind of the idea behind Ascend is really to have a, a three-part focus uh, with a, a research component um, that would bring together uh, researchers in a number of areas and, and Ascend would help to um, coordinate some of those activities, a, di a data component uh, where we would integrate data from a number of sources, and then a, a community engagement uh, component where we would uh, take that precision nutrition and other nutrition and diet related information and really target it in, in culturally sensitive ways for um, various populations and in particular underserved populations. I wanna point out that um, um, our mission area, the research education and economics mission area within USDA has, has four agencies um, and part of what we're doing with Ascend as well is, is helping to coordinate um, activities amongst those, but really highlight uh, the activities that are going on in these agencies around this, this whole concept of a better diet for um, prevention of, of chronic diseases. And so we have the Agricultural Research Service, uh, which is our in-house research arm, is doing a lot of work in precision nutrition and, and um, improvement of food, food quality um, uh, for consumers. Um, our National Institute of Food and Agriculture, NIFA, has both um, extramural uh, funding opportunities, but is in addition is involved in a number of 
um, activities with uh, food and nutrition security, uh, food assistance programs. ERS is our economic research service, um, is also involved in, in data analysis and, 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 and putting out information on, on information, putting out information related to uh, food security issues and nutrition. And our National Ag and Statistics Service also has um, a role to play in this as well. And so what Ascend is hoping to do is to really help uh, highlight the work that's going on amongst our agencies um, and also bring in other partners uh, to this uh, effort as well. And so in the next slide, um, just to sort of point out a few, um, we're looking to partner with other, other groups uh, within the government as well as outside, but you know, groups within the government such as Food and Nutrition Service, Health and Human Services, uh, NIH, National Institutes of Health, and Department of Defense, Indian Health Service as just a few examples. And so we want to really bring together resources and activities amongst these groups. Uh, next slide. I mentioned precision nutrition um, as sort of a focal point of this effort. Uh, this is really an emerging field that seeks to um, really understand dietary recommendations more for uh, specific population groups um, to target better nutrition guidelines that's related to individuals' characteristics and the circumstances um, that, that would improve their health. And so we know that groups with particular uh, of genetics, um, um, related um, environmental uh, conditions, um, and as well as looking at life stage issues, uh, that some of the nutrition requirements that we have out there may be more specific uh, to those individuals. And what we don't have right now is a lot of, are a lot of data um, in particular for underserved uh, populations and so what we hope with Ascend um, is to really help advance activities and research to fill those research gaps in precision nutrition um, where we don't have that information right now. And next slide. And where we see this going, um, we have the Dietary Guidelines for Americans. Um, uh, Sheila had mentioned um, our MyPlate um, um, you know, uh, tools that are out there. Um, and what we hope with um, the, the dietary guidelines are really a, a one size fits all. Um, and we know that there's better guidance for specific groups. We just don't have all the data in hand yet uh, to help make those guidelines happen. And so with Ascend and with our other activities, uh, we hope to advance you know, better information, translate that information for the public and particular um, population groups in, in better ways as we go forward. Uh, next slide. Uh, what I can mention as part of the activities of Ascend over the last year, we held a number of listening sessions uh, with various community groups uh, focused on the African American community, uh, um, the Hispanic community, uh, uh, tribal uh, Native American populations, uh, as well as youth communities. We held a number of listening sessions to hear what uh, their perceived opportunities and challenges were uh, towards healthy eating um, on our Ascend website. Uh, it's been shown that a few times on here, um, we do have a summary report of all of those as well as individual reports from each of those listening sessions. Um, and in the next slide, I can sort of give you a little brief overview of the, the highlights of those events. In terms of challenges to healthy eating, uh, individuals mention things like cost, knowledge about what to eat, um, the initiative to do so. Um, a big part was the accessibility and availability of a high uh, quality healthy foods and their social environment that sometimes created challenges to healthy eating. Um, individuals from these listening sessions also pointed out various opportunities, such as an interest in having personal wellness, um, a need for better education about um, healthy eating, uh, what, what to eat and how to prepare those diets, the motivation to do so. Again, the accessibility availability issue was a big one. And then having a support system to continue uh, with a healthy uh, lifestyle and healthy eating. And so those activities were uh, very important uh, for Ascend to start understanding uh, where we could have an impact 
And one of those outcomes of the listening sessions in the next slide um, was the um, outgrowth of our first nutrition hub um, in collaboration with Southern University A&M College. Uh, this was the first of what we hope to be several nutrition hubs uh, that will help us deliver um, healthy food messages in, in culturally sensitive ways to communities and really to help us develop um, activities and cooperation for more research to fill the knowledge gaps um, in precision nutrition um, and health activities and how diet can impact better health in underserved populations. And so with that overview, I'd like to then turn it over to my colleague, uh, Dr. York at Southern University uh, to give you uh, more information on the Nutrition Hub um, at Southern. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, as Mike said, I'm Deshaun York. I am the Vice Chancellor for Extension and Outreach with the Southern University Ag Center. I'll also serve as the director of the Nutrition Hub at Southern University. Next slide, please. As Mike kind of alluded to, we know that African Americans remain the least healthy ethnic group in the United States. And as a result, there are many chronic diseases and conditions. However, also we know that 1890 institutions for more than a century has been a trusted source of information for this uh, population. And so that is what one of the um, main objectives of the Nutrition Hub is going to be for us to focus on this population so that we can provide information in a trusted manner that may um, impact outcomes, positive outcomes for this population. Next slide, please. As an 1890 university, of course, we are part of the tripartite mission mandate for teaching, research, and extension. And as I said, I'm the vice chancellor for extension but we do have um, the vice chancellors for the other mission mandate areas of research and teaching, Dr. Renita Marshall and Dr. Toledo, um, Ulysses Toledo, who will be speaking later in the presentation, but they will speak more about their goals and what they'll be doing with the um, Nutrition Hub. Next slide, please. Now the title probably should have said Ascend and not Nutrition Hub because these are a few pictures from our January 31st, 2023 event here in Baton Rouge. We had an Ascend event. Um, as you can see, it was very well attended. But what was really great about this event was that the people that you see in these photos were very, very vocal and transparent in what they felt the issues were effect that were affecting them and their health and their access to health care, their access to nutritious, healthy foods. They really told us a lot. And um, that information, as Dr. Gusek said, was used to um, develop the Nutrition Hub. So that the Nutrition Hub actually came out of the event. Um, you can say less than a year later, uh, the powers that be said, we've got to do something. We're hearing what they're saying. We want to help. We don't just want to get information and not do anything. We want to make sure that we're putting the boots on the ground and letting these individuals know that when they come to us and tell us what their needs are, we're doing everything in our power to assist. And so these are pictures from that event. Next slide. Again, it's the first ever USDA pilot Ascend Nutrition Hub. And we have four overarching goals for our work through the hub. We want to build current and future work for, workforce capacity. We want to develop collaborations and partner, partnerships with organizations that serve the African-American community. We want to disseminate science-based nutrition information and connect communities with food and nutrition security and economic vitality programs. And we also want to foster research and training opportunities in human nutrition research particularly in underserved and underrepresented communities. Next slide. These are a few pictures of our students. And these are students that are working via our Center of Excellence. And Dr. Renita Marshall will speak more to that program. But as you can see, what we're doing here at Southern University, we're not just doing outreach in the community, we're also doing outreach here at the university level. And so these are some of our students 
in nutrition education classes. And in those classes, we teach them healthy eating. And we also teach them how to prepare healthy, healthy foods and snacks. And so this is what you're seeing, some of the pictures of them actually in a class uh, with an instructor who's showing them the proper way to prepare their foods. But in addition to this, before they got to this point, they had nutrition education that taught them about healthy eating. Next slide. We know you know that Southern University is in Louisiana. And so we wanted to give you a short video with just a little taste of Louisiana to show you what we're doing in our gardens and start the video. Okay, so as you, that was a little rock out for you, but you can see that that was a part of our center of excellence and what we're doing in gardening. And so Dr. Renita Marshall, as I said, again, will expound on that, but you will see that we're doing a lot of, of gardening um, in hopes of eradicating some of the food deserts here in Louisiana. We do have quite a bit, we have a lot of food insecurity. And so we're hoping that uh, through our center of excellence and our nutrition hub, in addition to diet quality and, and physical activity that we're able to touch on some food insecurity. The um, contact information for myself and my colleagues are on the screen. You can feel free to contact us at any time. And I thank you for your time. Sheila. Thank you, Dr. Grusak and Dr. York. Those were very informative, comprehensive and short overviews, allowing us time to have a really fruitful panel discussion together. Um, we, for Ascend for Better Health, as both Dr. Grusak and Dr. York alluded to, is teamwork makes the dream work. It is a variety of folks across our department and across our broader partnership with Southern University to make this initiative work. I'm going to ask our USDA colleagues to first introduce themselves and then pass it off to our Southern University folks who have not spoke to introduce themselves before we get started here. I'm going to start um, going around the room, so to speak, and have Dr. Um, Suzanne Saluska start, and then she'll pass it off to one of our colleagues. Hi, yes. Good afternoon. Suzanne Saluska with USDA NIFA, the Deputy Director for the Institute of Food Safety and Nutrition. And um, yeah, let's see. I'll pass it off to Dr. Uh, Stark Reed. Good afternoon, I'm Pam stark -Reed, and I'm the Deputy Administrator for the Agricultural Research Service, and I oversee the research programs in human nutrition, quality, and new uses, and I will pass it on to Park. Dr. Park, she called on you. Sorry, my sound is cutting out. My name is Cindy Parr. I am the Assistant Chief Data Officer of the remission area I'm based at the National Ag Library, and I will pass it off to Dr. Guthrie. Hi, I'm Joanne Guthrie, and I'm a research nutritionist with um, Economic Research Service Food Economics Division, and uh, really happy to meet everybody and talk to everyone. And let me see, who does that round up the Dr. USDA? Dr. Toledo, yeah, you're gonna pass it off to Southern. Okay, on to Dr. Toledo. Yes, good afternoon or morning, wherever you are, uh, everybody. Um, I'm Jose Ulysses Toledo. I'm the Vice Chancellor for Research at the Southern University Agricultural Center. I'll pass it on to Dr. Marshall. Good afternoon, everyone. Renita Marshall. I am the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Student Support Services for the Southern University Ag Center, as well as the Associate mm -hmm. Dean for the College of Agriculture, Family, and Consumer Sciences, previously name change to College of Agriculture, Human and Environmental Sciences. So with the Nutrition Hub, hub I kind of serve as that connecting link and liaison between the Nutrition Hub, the Southern University's 1890 Center of Excellence for Nutrition, Health, Wellness, and Quality of Life, as well as our College of Agriculture here at Southern University. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to have all of you here today. We hope all of our listeners appreciate hearing all the various agencies and assets we have here at USDA and also at Southern University um, to really work towards health better together. Um, earlier, we heard backgrounds from Ascend for Better Health and its goals from Dr. Grushan, and also how the, the news 
Nutrition Hub from at Southern University fits in. I'd love for each of you guys, so I'll kind of call on you to, to get all of your opinions. I'd love for each of you to expand on kind of key facets um, of this initiative and where your agencies are going to plug in regarding the research, data, and engagement. I'm going to start alphabetically and talk to um, Dr. Pam Stark-Reed at the Agriculture Research Service. Thank you. Um, our, our agency, as, as you've heard from Mike, uh, Dr. Grzeck was is the intramural research um, agency for the U.S. We have research located across the country. We will be doing research into um, these specific populations. Uh, for um, with Southern, we will be partnering Southern to bring our research um, folks together with their research folks to build better collaborations in terms of research. And we will hopefully be doing research with for some of the information that will be able to be used by these community um, in order to help uh, define and, and, and enhance um, the role of food and nutrition to prevent chronic diseases and improve health. Thank you, Dr. Stark Reed. And now I'm going to pass it to our economic research representative, um, Joanne Guthrie. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I'm with the USDA's Economic Research Service. Um, we have three research divisions. Um, of interest to this group, um, I'm in the food economics division, um, and we have we generate and maintain data tables and research resources that may be of interest to you. When um, the listening session was held at Southern University, um, Elena Roan, who's one of our researchers in the food environment area, came and talked about the food access research atlas, the food environment atlas which um, gives an opportunity to get some on the ground information that can be relevant to program planning and priorities. We maintain a lot of other different kinds of consumer food data that we think could be useful. We also do um, reports, research publications. Um, I'll just briefly also mention that we have a resource in rural economics group, which does work that may be relevant to um, meeting the needs of rural populations. So um, our website is www.ers.usda.gov. Please check us out. Please communicate with us if you think that there's anything we can help you with as far as research and data is concerned. Thank you, Dr. Guthrie. Now I'm gonna pass it off to my colleague at NIFA, Dr. Suzanne Toluca. Thanks, Dr. Fleischacker. Um, so here at NIFA, we, uh, one of the, I guess, strengths that we have across the nation is our cooperative extension system with our land-grant universities. So we already had many numerous connections with Southern University through, through that network, um, whether it be the 1890s, you know, Center of Excellence uh, work that they're doing in partnership with their other 1890 institutions to our expanded food and nutrition education program or FNA. Um, nutrition um, education aspects that have, have been ongoing. So we're really, um, although we do the research and education piece, I really see NIFA um, engaging the most in that engagement and that outreach aspect, um, really helping to thrive again with that extension model. Thank you. And now I want to transition to our colleagues at Southern University. Dr. Toledo and then Dr. Marshall, do you want to expand on some of the assets you guys have at Southern University to complement the overview Dr. York gave? Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm going to start uh, since I represent research at Southern University. So, uh, you know, based on the mission and the goals that we established for the uh, Nutrition Hub, I believe it is important to first assess the state of knowledge associated with the nutrition, food and health in general, and also uh, all the research conducted for specific groups. We have already started to identify research collaborations with scientists at USDA ARS and uh, with other potential collaborators from various universities. So the idea is to develop uh, a, a national database, including research capabilities and data generated up to date. Uh, our teams then will pursue key strategic research collaborations on those areas in which we still need to generate um, additional data, which is necessary to translate uh, our research into outreach programs. 
So based on the, also based on the needs of our, our stakeholders, our communities. Um, this is an important step uh, as it relates to uh, an interface because uh, there will be two key positions uh, uh, leading also the nutrition hub. One is gonna be uh, our, uh, our REE uh, scientist, uh, which uh, who is gonna collaborate with uh, a, a nutrition uh, specialist at Southern University. And they, those two will, will co-direct the nutrition hub so, uh, so that collaboration between research and outreach is, is, is extremely important because we, we like to translate all the research findings into actionable and impactful uh, outreach uh, programs. And Dr. Marshall, do you have anything to add? Yes, just briefly with the Southern University's Center of Excellence for Nutrition, Health, Wellness, and Quality of Life, we do zone in and focus on the three mission areas of the teaching, research, and extension. And so um, from the Center of Excellence standpoint, we will be incorporating programming into the engagement piece and then making sure also that our other 1890 institutions are able to take some of this information and replicate it on their campuses as well. So, Thank you. And now I want to transition to a special deep dive on data and highlight one of what I think is one of USDA's uh, treasurers, and that is our National Ag Library. And here with us today are Dr. Uh, Cynthia Parr. Um, could you please share with us kind of the approaches that the National Ag Library is taking overall and as it relates specific to helping us for better health? Sure, I'd be happy to. So I'll say that we started by leading a few working sessions with nutrition research experts at USDA to talk about the kinds of diet and health data that are currently available and what we could do to make those more usable in the future and also where the gaps in those data sets might be. Um, we've been discussing how our partners in the nutrition hubs might take advantage of all this data and how we can make sure that there's a good pipeline of data and students, for example, at Southern University or elsewhere to take advantage of all this data and to help fill in those gaps that, that Dr. Toledo talked about. Um, we're currently putting this together into a roadmap. Um, ultimately, we would like to be able to measure success using data on how Ascend is actually improving health outcomes for the communities that we're working with. Um, but for now, we'll work to prioritize data that those communities want and can use to make a difference. So for example, what data can support community focused research so that together we're answering questions in the right cultural context. If we have to select parts of existing databases or combine across data, databases, how do we do that? Um, finally, what data can help shape messaging campaigns so that community members can make informed choices? And if it comes to it, how can data drive community action? where it's needed. So Dr. Toledo, I'm, I'm really looking forward to working more with you and your team. Well, data is so important to the conversation of really helping everyone in this country thrive and hopefully use um, new strategies like precision nutrition. Um, but we also know, and as highlighted throughout um, our speakers earlier today, engagement is really essential and kind of community connections. Um, Suzanne, Dr. Saluska, you were at the forefront of the formative efforts for Ascend for Better Health. I'm going to ask you just to kind of expand on some of those efforts and some of the lessons learned you have as we, we move forward with the Nutrition Hub. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so uh, Sheila was also very active in these initiatives from the beginning. So thank you for that help. So number one, we also need to thank our partners. It was um, in starting this initiative, we did not want to come in and be like, no, this is USDA's idea. We've got all the answers. Uh, we know exactly what to do. And, and I hope from the start that that's been emphasized that this was done in partnership and really lifting up that um, the voice of those at Southern University City, you know, to leading their, their listening session to those individuals at the other listening sessions, that their voices were extremely important and that the community voice was important. And so we engaged community right from the beginning. We um, protected their data. That was another piece um, that I really want to lift up. We um, 
instilled the importance that this data belongs to the community. So we um, developed a report in collaboration, but um, USDA, you know, we, we really asked the universities to take and to own that data and to use that um, with the community. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to translating and using um, and tweaking these listening sessions as models um, as we develop, as Cindy said, with different outcomes and looking at our outcomes for how we use these as models um, going forward to ensure that uh, the work that is done is what the communities need um, and as they know best, right? They have the knowledge and then uh, we're here to support um, and to lift up um, resources that then can help them to accomplish uh, what they need to accomplish, whether it be in their individual uh, lives with their families um, and in their communities. Thank you, Dr. Skaluska. For, for many of you guys who might know, uh, Dr. Skaluska and I met actually when we were both working um, very intimately on Native American health and looking through a model of a modified talking circle. So very much appreciated her genuine effort at that time. And then really with this effort of really thinking through community-driven ways to really hear voice um, to these issues around research data and really hopefully um, uh, using diet related strategies to um, live a healthier and longer life. Um, I want to ask others on the panel if you guys have uh, reflections from, from the formative stages or Southern University colleagues. You obviously hosted the first one on very short notice. I remember that part very intimately, uh, but also want to open it up to our USDA colleagues again from kind of their perspectives and lessons learned from those important formative stages with the three key communities that we focused on and then also our youth events. Dr. Chalita, do you want to go first? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to uh, expand a little bit on that. Uh, I'm going to use a a little uh, angle as it relates to the data approach. I think that in addition to the data collection, uh, obviously it's, it's, it's extremely important that we, we, we use the data that is already there. And also we're gonna generate new data to fill up those, those gaps that we, we just talked about. But uh, I'm excited about the opportunity to further our, you know, an analysis with new new tools that are there, you know, artificial intelligence, deep learning, machine learning. I think those tools will be really helpful to us to uncover or or put their uh, new models that that um, they couldn't we couldn't do that otherwise uh, with, without these tools. And and so I'm I'm really uh, excited about the opportunity to explore. Uh, these these avenues uh, for for data analysis. Thank you, Dr. Toledo. And again, just really want to echo Dr. Sluska and our other colleagues' um, praise um, to Southern University for hosting our first formative event. It was outstanding. And again, on very short notice, but I think both their, Dr. Sluska and I and our team of 1890 um, program team, also Dr. Hugh, who's behind the scenes here on slides, just knew you guys could hit it out of the ballpark without a problem, just knowing you're really really genuine and strong connections with your community partners um, around these issues of research and engagement and extension. Um, Dr. Marshall, Dr. York, do you guys want to lift up any other key lessons learned regarding the, the formative stages at Southern? I can say something. Um, when I think about research and I think about data, you know, we have so much basic and applied research, social science research. We have so much and we want the data to be utilized in a, in a manner that's acceptable. And so with, with all of this, you know, it's going to give us an opportunity with through the listening sessions, the one that we've had already, is to make sure that the information, the data that we have can be culturally sensitive to the audience that we are, are targeting and presented in a manner that's useful that they can understand and that can individually go into helping them live better lives. So that that was that was a takeaway from me for um from the Ascend listening session that we had. Mm -hmm. Dr. York. Yes, ma'am. You all I'm extension and I'm extension through and through. So when I'm into in any of these um environments or any of these meetings, I'm trying to hear where we need to be, what do we what do we need to do. And we all know that resources are scarce everywhere. So every, we don't all have an abundance of resources. So when we're doing programming, we want really targeted programming. We want to, to provide what the people need, not so much what we think they need, but what they tell us they need. And when we have these listening sessions, that's what we hear. We're in tune to what is it that they say that they need because we don't wanna provide programming and nobody comes. 
or nobody, you know, embraces it because they don't feel they need it because we thought they needed it, but we never engaged them. And so what these listening session, sessions do is help us to engage our constituents so that we can hear what their needs really are and we can tailor our programming to those needs. I also want to just lift up um, part of our, our formative efforts did include two efforts with youth, but we've highlighted on an earlier webinar series. And to be part of that, just like thinking of the, across the life stage is really important. And again, meeting them where they are. Like I was pretty surprised all the youth were pulling out phones and going on QR codes and had no problem like doing our survey where I thought we might have some paper copies and things like that. So again, it's that balance of kind of meeting folks where they are and kind of the, the mediums in which they communicate, which um, for them, they had no problems on their phones and in social to, to engage um, in creative ways. Um, Dr. Grusak. Yeah, I just want to sort of expand on this comment about the listening sessions a little bit and point out that on the Ascend website, uh, we do have toolkits available for others uh, to host their own listening sessions. And so we, we gained some very valuable knowledge from the listening sessions we held. Um, those were put together into some documents uh, to help others um, reach out to their communities. And so I encourage people to go to the Ascend website and um, look for that information. Thank you. Any others from our team that want to reflect on the formative stages, the community building pieces? All right. Well, I think you'll hear and you probably will hear again that building trust is so essential to this hub work. And I think we're very lucky to have really strong community partners with Southern University and with, again, with their, their branches into the community, um, both, both locally, but also within the state and also within the region and nationally. So we're really excited um, to leverage their center of excellent um, assets. Um, and again, I think it really shows the strong network that we were able to build there, um, both locally within the state and within the region. I want to now transition before we take the questions that are coming in from the QA. I do want to remind folks to use the question and answer function to put your questions or comments in there. Um, part of the reason why we uh, scheduled the Ascend for Better Health um, webinar during February was to really celebrate Black History Month and really, as Dr. York um, beautifully did earlier, to call, call attention to not only the disparities that the Black community face um, in Black health, but also the assets they have to accelerate health equity, both in their own community and really in the lessons learned that they're finding amongst all communities of color. So I would love for our panelists to really reflect on some key strategies that they've heard um, in the formative stages or as they're researching, you know, what they're really thinking about in terms of key ways that we can really help all um, black blacks in this country thrive and really learn lessons from these efforts um, for all communities of color that are disproportionately impacted. Um, Dr. York, you started this conversation, so do you want to go first? Okay, sorry, I was trying to unmute. Um, your question is you're wanting me to give key, I'm sorry, because it... it, it yeah, just highlighting kind crazy. of that you have found at Southern that work to promote um, health within the Black community? Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm sorry. My, I'm, I'm trying to unmute and the, the voice is doing something. Okay, so yeah, with our nutrition programs and how we're working with African-Americans, but not just African-American communities, all minorities, we're doing a lot of nutrition, health, and wellness through our SNAP and FNEP programs. Okay, and then we do have a nutrition team that works um, across the lifespan, and we're also incorporating public health and mental health into those spheres as well. And so we're using a holistic approach to um, work with our nutrition team to combat nutrition, I mean, obesity and obesity related um, illnesses. We found that some of it's due to food insecurity, some of it's due to mental health, some of it's due to inactivity, some of it's due to PSCs and environmental uh, restraints that people have where they can't get out to to exercise, are they? They're in, in food deserts where there are no supermarkets. So we're trying to use a holistic approach, a PSC approach, to uh, mitigating um, obesity and obesity-related illnesses in the African American community. Thank you. Any others want to weigh in on key strategies they're they're trying or want to explore in the nutrition hub? Uh, Sheila, I'd like to bring an ex uh, a particular example, actually from the Center of Excellence where uh, Dr. Marshall is leading. Um, there's exciting research there uh, taking place right now. Um, 
they look in, uh, for instance, into the uh, association between diet and the gut uh, microbiome uh, of uh, specific uh, uh, communities, in this case, African-American. And, and so I know that there are a lot of research uh, uh, and there was already on that, on that area, but this particular one, you know, it's gonna be revealing in that we, we like to see whether there's any differences uh, as it relates to communities uh, in terms of, of diet and, and health. And, and so the microbiome obviously has a, a direct correlation with, with your health. And so we're looking at those issues and, and through the nutrition hub, we can actually further some of those studies uh, uh, with, with collaborations with ARS, ARS scientists as well as uh, other universities. Thank you. And I appreciated Dr. Guthrie earlier bringing attention to our ERF colleague, Zelina, who did the presentation at Southern University. For me, one of the key pieces that I'm really excited about is our efforts to build the next generation and the pipeline. And thinking of that as a kind of a key strategy to um, advance health equity and really kind of show representation in our workforce. So there's a variety of efforts. Um, Dr. Shaluska could expand on that. We'll hopefully have a webinar on that in the coming year, um, really just highlighting the variety of ways that that plays. And for me, again, hearing all of you guys speak, it, I really enjoy both in the formative stages and the way we're setting up the nutrition hub, really the importance of multi-generational, which is not only important, I think, in the Black black community, but but all the other communities of health that we hope, uh, communities of color that we really work through, um, really just thinking through, you know, the various points of contact in that household and in that community, they're going to play a role in shaping everyone's health. I want to turn to questions in the QA, and again, I encourage folks to um, include their questions in the QA. Um, I'm going to start this one with Dr. Grusak or from the top. This is, does Ascend sponsor nutrition research regarding AMD, age-related eye disease? So that would be sort of age, I'm presuming that's age-related macular degeneration. Um, and I would say we're, we're not we're not doing anything specifically in that area. Um, we do have um, at our Tufts Human Nutrition Research Center uh, research on, on um, carotenoids and, and, and um, I, I'm not sure, Pam, if there is. I, I know there used to be some eye health uh, research there. There probably still is. Uh, so within our our agencies, we do that sort of work, but Ascend is not specifically sponsoring any work in that area. And again, we're happy, feel free to email me after. We're happy to connect you both with relevant USDA resources in that space and or within our federal colleagues um, within NIH. So feel free to just pop me an email and we're happy to connect you with additional funding opportunities that might be more relevant to your work. Um, next question is a little long, but I do want to read it. And it is, if one of the most significant obstacles facing underserved or, or resource limited communities is accessibility, availability, and affordability of healthy, fresh foods, what steps will the nutrition hub or hub take to simplify the path to a healthier lifestyle? While health communication is critical, many individuals in, individuals in these communities um, have barriers to, to getting healthier foods to attain them. So despite extensive research demonstrating the positive impact of food security in communities, there is limited funding support for organizations addressing these challenges. How can we, how can NIFA restructure these nutrition hubs to focus on solutions rather than examining the issues? Well, I want to say first, a key part of today's um, overview is really showing the whole of USDA and our key partners right now at Southern University that's going to take to build the nutrition hub and our work ahead. Um, so NIF is just one spoke in that wheel. Um, I will say this is a broader, um, this initiative is a broader part of the secretary's core priority to address food and nutrition security and the pillar pages that um, help um, really showcase our whole of department approach that really highlight a variety of solution oriented approaches our department is taking to help improve um, the food system to really transform the food system and to improve access to healthy food. So I definitely want to say in our whole of department approach to advancing food and nutrition security, um, and I will I will send it in the follow up um, notes, we have a variety of assets that can help communities um, really um, bring access to healthy foods within their community. Ascend, as, as Dr. Grusan and others can kind of comment on, you know, it has one piece to this puzzle. It's not just kind of examining the problem. It is thinking through solutions. But I do want to say in the immediate, we do have some mechanisms that can kind of better help communities like community food prop, uh, food projects or Gus Nip, Gus Schumacher Nutrition Center programs that can really help with that access piece. 
And then our colleagues within the marketing and regulatory program, and also our colleagues within the food and nutrition service and the federal, federal nutrition assistance program have a variety of solution oriented approaches um, to helping folks have access to healthy and nutritious food. But I do want others to weigh in on this question it is an important feature of kind of the approach Ascend is taking and really how we are trying to kind of be solution driven and data driven in our approaches ahead. Dr. Grusak, do you, do you want to comment on this at all? I think um, maybe turn it over to our Southern colleagues, because um, really, you know, they're going to be the boots on the ground that are going to carry this forward. Um, you know, we do hope to have, as mentioned earlier, other other nutrition hubs. And so, um, you know, work with all of our colleagues on this um, sort of area. Um, I can jump in right here okay. and say something. Um, when we think about, you know, um, access and we definitely have to look at education and employment opportunities. We know that these are all linked to having better health outcomes. You know, here at, at Southern University within our college, we have nutrition programs, nutrition, health and wellness. We have um, culinary management and we also have a dietetic internship program. So we look at ways to educate our, our students and then also help them go on to educate those within, uh, within the community. And then also um, we have to think about supporting those community-based organizations that are out there. And through our Center of Excellence, we partner with um, faith-based organizations, churches, um, community um, organizations, YWCA and youth programs in order to help them um, work on healthcare equity initiatives within, within those different communities. And um, like you said, I mean, the main thing is um, trying to build trust and maintaining that trust within those um, communities so that we can provide um, access to those areas. And um, Dr. York mentioned earlier about Southern University um, and food desert. Southern University is located right in the middle of the food desert. So we look at these pop-up um, farmers markets and then we're also in the process of trying to incorporate some mobile food markets. So all of these things lend towards um, access and uh, affordability in order to increase the health of these communities. Thank you, Dr. Marshall. I think again, we're all really echoing. It takes a whole department. It takes a it takes a village. It really does take really strong whole of society approaches. You're probably hearing those for those who um, watched the White House conference event earlier today about ending hunger and building healthier communities. It really is going to take all of us. And that goes to one question where um, Jennifer Nordak is asking, you know, how could other organizations and industries get involved with the Ascend for Better Health initiative? and then this um, new nutrition hub. So Dr. Grisak, do you wanna take the first part of just broader Ascend for Better Health? And then maybe um, Dr. York, you guys could kind of talk through um, ways to connect at Southern University. Yeah, I mean, we're we're, we're looking for partners. Um, we'd love to hear from people that uh, have, you know, similar goals in mind. And um, what, you know, the Ascend initiative would like to do is, is help make those connections. Um, and bring people together. So, you know, we have we have resources in terms of you know our agencies, and we know who's doing what. Uh, and so, I would say, you know, reach out to myself, um, and I can you know help make connections. We could have a meeting and and talk about what what your goals and interests are. And Dr. York, Toledo, or Marshall, you guys want to speak to ways to connect with Southern University? Um, I want to mentioned the fact that um, this is a cooperative agreement between uh, our university and, and, and the USDA. And as such, obviously, we are actually looking for partners to, to better to better this, this uh, 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 endeavor, obviously. Uh, we also looking for additional resources. I think I saw a question also related to the AFRI component. I think AFRI is an excellent vehicle uh, to to, to fund additional uh, research and outreach components uh, for this particular endeavor. Uh, so, so yes, so, you know, we, we just got it started, but I think uh, we need to be finding uh, key st st strategic partners as well as uh, funding uh, moving forward. 
Well, thank you again. There's a couple questions that folks are asking kind of ways to collaborate. And I really do want to emphasize one key takeaway um, from today's webinar is really we're celebrating Black health and really just showcasing the village we're building here at USDA and with our partnership with Southern University and hopefully with all our listeners and those we share with the recording. Um, it really is going to take a whole society approach. So we appreciate your questions of where and how to help and to plug in. We do hopefully um, want to help facilitate those connections. So please don't be shy to ask ways to connect and or ways to engage. We have a lot of folks here on this call today that have relevant agency um, assets that can help you. And then ideally um, ways to connect across our whole. I do wanna be mindful of time. And so there are some specific questions about particular grant opportunities at NIFA. Um, again, we are very much uh, want to help you um, explore any funding opportunities that you're interested in at NIFA, at ERS, at ARS. Um, at the National Ag Library, any of the assets highlighted here by USDA and also from Southern University. So feel free to just send me an email and we'll connect you accordingly. And then I also want to note that there's a question again of kind of thinking through how we are um, really connecting programming around healthy eating and access. So again, I want to emphasize um, for us, at least for the tackling food and nutrition security insecurity core priority, we are highlighting a variety of ways to connect with healthy food across our department. Rural development plays a role in this through Healthy Food Financing Initiative. Um, as I mentioned earlier, our marketing and regulatory programs play such a key role with their procurement, procurement strategies. Even our Office of Tribal Relations is playing an essential role with really um, and better integrating indigenous foods. So we have a variety of assets that are really helping with um, the connecting folks with healthy food. And we are really working to kind of better connect that with our information. So as I mentioned earlier, next, next edition, we'll do the Making My Plate a Household Name. And that is a key kind of feedback loop that we're getting from folks. It's like, hey, we're trying to promote them to eat more fruits and vegetables. And, you know, again, how do, how do we make that work within various contexts where it might be seasonal challenges or, um, you know, buying certain types of vegetables might be challenging or they don't have the cooking equipment um, to do that or the skills to do that or the kids who really want to eat that, right? <laughs> a variety of barriers to those things. So um, hopefully we'll talk about that more in this series and hopefully again in the follow-up materials, you'll see a variety of ways we can do that. But I think that's food for thought for our Southern University colleagues to take back as they work on, on the Nutrition Hub is really thinking through, you know, how do we promote those connections with actually the messages we're giving um, with the ability to um, follow through on those diets, both at the individual level, the family level, and the community level. Um, I do want to say that um, just in close, you know, folks were talking about, you know, the various ways that Ascend is really trying to kind of bridge across our departments and really across our partners with the land grant university system, but also really all of our apartments across this nation. And as Mike emphasized, we are creative with partners. So um, hopefully many others who are intrigued with this work will reach out. I want to be mindful of time and I want to leave the last word to our colleagues today and really want each of them to go around and really lift up something they're most excited about um, as we celebrate Black History Month this month, and as we uh, transition next month to celebrating National Nutrition Month, what they're most excited about in terms of the impacts this new, new nutrition hub would have in that work. So I'll start with my uh, bingo card and go with Dr. York. I knew you were. <laughs> I am most excited about what the um, nutrition hub is gonna do for African-Americans in Louisiana. Um, the, the approach is so targeted to um, the needs that they have and, and the things that they have said that they want to see. It's such a targeted approach that I'm really excited for us to get out there and, and get our individuals hired and hit the ground running with proven um, techniques and approaches to help eradicate uh, chronic diseases in African-Americans. So I'm really excited about the extension side of the Nutrition Hub. We're very excited too. Dr. Marshall, do you wanna um, go next? Yes, yes, yes. So under, under goal number three, we mentioned about the how the Nutrition Hub will um, foster training opportunities for faculty, staff, and students here at Southern University. And we are a minority serving institution. And that's exciting to me because we will have an opportunity to bring together teams with diverse backgrounds that will increase our capacity here at Southern University for our students, um, for our researchers in programming and being able to really, really serve the um, minority communities in those underserved areas. And last from uh, Southern University, Dr. Toledo. Yes, um, I'm most excited about the opportunity 
to build uh, further research capacity, and not only for Southern University, for, but for the entire land grant system and other organizations. Um, I think this is going to be a, uh, a, a great endeavor to further the food, nutrition, and health uh, through this national uh, uh, endeavor. We're excited to work with you. And I'm going to transition to our USDA colleagues to give kind of a quick um, final piece about what they're excited about. I'll start with Dr. Grusak. I'll just be very quick and just say I'm very excited about uh, the connections that um, Southern University has with the other 1890s institutions and the ability to really sort of spread out and extend the work uh, to other communities. Exciting. And Dr. Parr? So I am really excited at the, the possibilities around data. We're, we're in such a data-driven society now. There's technology advancing so rapidly that we really need to help um, the next generation learn how to use the power of that data. But we have to do it in a way that people can trust. So I think it's not just about the technology or the data. It's also about the relationship and making sure people care and are using it in a sensitive way. Thanks. And I'll move to Agriculture Research Service with Dr. Pam Stark-Reed. Um, I just want to reiterate, reiterate that we are very excited about the research connections, about being able to do research in communities that we haven't really done very extensive research in. And this is going to help support, uh, hopefully, those communities, but also the whole area of precision nutrition. It's really important that we, we have access and that we work together in this partnership with the research. Thanks. And here at Economic Research Service, Dr. Guthrie. Um, yeah, some, th uh, some people have brought up some really good things. Um, you know, I forgot to mention Elena Roan, who uh, spoke with, at the uh, listening session, is a proud graduate of Southern University. And she also was, came to ERS first as an 1890 scholar. So we saw her as she progressed through the college years. And I think it's really, really important to the future of our country to lift up a diverse range of talented people who can contribute at every level in our society. So we're, that's a really important thing just in and of itself, as well as making sure that the research is being done um, of, by, and for the community. Um, several years ago, ERS had a uh, small grants program through the Southern Rural Development Center at I think it was then Mississippi State and unfortunately lost funding, but someone mentioned food deserts. That was where our first papers about food deserts emanated from. And you, you have to have people who are, you know, living in diverse parts of the world to look at it through those eyes, bring those ideas up and bring them to the table. So this is a really great thing for all of us. So we're really excited about it. And last, I'll have my colleague from NIFA, um, Dr. Suzanne Saluska. I'm just going to emphasize what Joanne um, stated as well. I'm so um, happy to work with Southern as the first, the pilot, an 1890s minority serving institution. You all are going to be the mentors and you're going to help to set up the future hubs going forward. And for that, um, that diversity that you're going to bring, that traditional knowledge of working with your African-American communities. We are so looking forward to partnering with you and seeing all that you're going to accomplish. So thank you. Well, I want to round up today and really give a heartfelt thank you to all these folks who really put in a lot of work in a short period of time to really lift up the formative work that was done at Southern University and other universities as we um, tour the country um, to work on a Send for Better Health and really thankful for all of our USDA colleagues that are coming together to really show a, showcase a whole department approach we have here to really help everyone in this country thrive. So I thank everyone for joining us today, including our attendees. We'll share the recording and the relevant resources out in the next week or so. And again, feel free to reach out to us as you have questions about ways to connect and engage in this work. We really do want a whole of society, including you to help. Thank you. <laughs>